I'm just going to pull the valve cover off here to make sure that uh, nothing's messed up before I try cranking it over. Yeah, it's not great. You got a nice milky white valve cover here. Probably gonna have to clean it out a little bit. All right, let's get an engine running. I've got my wiring diagram, I've got my multimeter, i got my coffee. Okay, so I have my starter switch wired up to the starter button, and I've got my multimeter on the starter solenoid. I don't want to actually crank it over because it doesn't have oil in it right now. So if I hit the switch, I should see 12 volts appear. But, nothing. So that little relay there is not being triggered. So, something's wrong on the starter circuit. Try that again. Turn the ignition on this time. Get my starter switch. And, still nothing. There is a neutral switch. Right there. So that neutral switch has a lime green wire that goes on that, that connects to the junction box. I've got that wire probed right here. It should be in neutral and uh, that connection should be closed to ground so I should see zero ohms or a few ohms but I'm seeing about 28 or so which, uh, which might be a little high uh, what I can do is I can jump that to ground real quick to see if that's going to uh, solve the issue. Okay, I got my high-tech paper clip placed in there, so let's turn the ignition on. And see if we get a click out of this thing. Mm, nothing. Maybe there's something wrong with my fuse, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the ignition on. That white wire is the uh, fused power, and uh, we'll see if we get any measurement out of there. And we have battery voltage, so our fuse is working fine. You can see there's a white wire that comes out of that that's fused uh, to power. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the trigger voltage for that relay. There's a potential for that relay to be bad, um, so I'm going to check the trigger voltage to see if that is actually doing anything. Alright, got my multimeter wired up to the trigger for that solenoid, and I'm going to turn the ignition on. We shouldn't see anything yet. And once I hit this button, we'll see if we get voltage. Nothing. Hmm. Well, I was checking the fuses, and it looks like the ignition fuse didn't look bad, but apparently it was blown. So I'm going to replace it with one of the spare fuses that was on the board. I'm going to pop that right in and uh, see what happens now. Okay, I replaced the fuse. Let's give it some power and uh, see if we can hear any click when we hit the switch of the solenoid. Nothing. So, this will crank if the clutch is out and it's in neutral, or the clutch is in uh, and it doesn't matter. So, I have connected the clutch in switch uh, to ground by doing this. So, it now thinks the clutch is in, so it should start regardless of whether or not that neutral position sensor is working. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it some ignition and press my button and see if the relay clicks. Nothing. Okay. Well, in looking at the schematic, the junction box doesn't actually have a dedicated ground on it. 
So what I did is I bolted it to the frame to get a good ground connection. Uh, so that should should help do something anyways. So let's give it some power. I got my multimeter connected to the starter relay. Let's see what happens when I push this. Still nothing. So fix a problem that doesn't help. Another revelation. That those red wires going into both of those coils has to be high voltage, which means that stop switch has to be grounded. So that stop switch is normally grounded, or not grounded but shorted, connected. And when you want to kill it, you uh, break the connection. So I now have that stop switch wired up, so that's connected. So I've got that black there, that brown and white wire connected to the black and brown wire. So when we connect those two together, we should get a voltage signal going over the junction box to power that starter circuit relay. So with any luck, we'll have that happening without anything blowing up here. So we're going to turn the ignition on, and hopefully when I press the button, we should get a little clicky click. Ah, there we go. Start. Only about 10 volts across that, but you can clearly hear that starter relay clicking. So that's good. That means we now have uh, the ability to drive the starter motor. The next step is going to be to get some oil in this thing so I can crank it and uh, check the coils for spark. Oh, uh, no, it's in a, actually, it's, I can't remember. It's got some in it? Oh, I'm spilling oil everywhere. I hate using this. <laughs> okay, let's see if we have spark. Turn it in the on position. Give it a crank. Don't see anything. Well, I replaced a gasket on this uh, cover here, but I didn't plug the uh, stator and I think the crank sensor maybe back in. So I might want to do that and then see if it sparks. Okay, I got those things plugged in. So uh, let's see if it sparks now. All right, so we're getting power at the at the uh, at the coil. This is a trigger right here. When this terminal is grounded out, it uh, sparks the plug. And you can see that when I touch this, yeah. So uh, the coil works. It's just a matter of getting that trigger signal from the um, from the that little junction box. All right, did a little research, and it looks like this older generation ignition switch is missing a 100 ohm resistor. So I popped in a 100 ohm into that plug there uh, that connects to a gray wire, which mysteriously goes to the CDI box. I guess it must be a trigger of some sort. So it goes, it's a gray wire that goes right in there. And I guess it expects uh, around 6 volts or so, depending on the current draw. So, uh, a little too high, so I uh, got my power on here. I got the plug grounded out. And uh, when I press the switch... You get a nice juicy spark. So that's good. I think the next thing I want to do now is... Um, Maybe see if it fires. All right, I got both spark plugs in this time with the coils on it. I know I'm getting spark, so it's gonna be a matter of, uh, I don't know, really, but let's give it another shot. It might be loud because I don't have the mufflers on it.
Well, that's success, huh? Let's try it again. Okay. Proof of concept anyways.